looking at page 5 of the Winter 2012 Exam 1. Question number 8 is about hurricanes. We have a distribution for the number of hurricanes in a year for the state of Florida. We're supposed to use that model and work out the probability of there being at least one hurricane over the next year. At least one. At least one means one or more. So one or more find the probability of that. Well, we could add up these 1, 2, 3, 4 probabilities and get 37, 38, 39, 40%. Or we could have also recognized that it's just what's left over after you look at that zero. So the probability of at least one hurricane in a given year can be found as the complement of the zero or 60% to get our 40%. Or we could have added up those directly. Regardless, the calculation is pretty straightforward and we get 40%. Now in part B, I'm seeing right at the start this kind of key word of given. So given that two hurricanes have already occurred and the year's not over yet, what's the probability there'll actually be a total of three? So we know in this distribution that we're already at two, that the observation for our x for this coming year is going to be at least two. It's something in this range. We don't have to worry about these other two parts of the distribution. Given that we're in this part of the distribution and our value of x is going to be at least 2, that's 7, 8, 9, that's 10%. Out of the 10% possibilities, how likely is it that we'll actually end up having 3? How likely is it to be here when we know we're in that 10% part? So that's 0 0.02 out of the 10% or 20%. We found a conditional probability that we actually ended up having 3 as our observed value of x, but conditionalized that on knowing that the x was for sure going to be at least 2. So out of the given part of 10%, how likely is it that this particular piece will occur? And in the third part here of this question, we're asked to look at the annual expected number of hurricanes, the expected value. And the expected value for a random variable, a discrete random variable that we have here, is shown right here. It's a weighted average of those values times their probabilities. So we want to find the expected value of x, or the mean, by taking each value that's possible and weighting it by its probability of occurring. So each value times its probability, and then a calculator out to do some of those multiplying for us, if we wish, should give us a value that's reasonable. It's got to be somewhere between 0 and 4, and it's probably going to be closer to this lower end where more of the probability is. In fact, our final answer is only 0.54 only a little more than half as the expected number of hurricanes. We are asked to provide the symbol, and we could use either one of these down here in our final answer line, either the expected value of x, since x has been defined, or mu, the population mean based on this model. It did not ask us to actually include a units. If we did, it would be hurricanes. We would expect on average about 0.54 hurricanes per year. You can't have 0.54 hurricanes in any one year, but that's what you'd expect over many years. A little more than half of a hurricane. All right, now let's turn to our next question on this page. I'm going to get the ink off here and move on down to the next part, where we're looking at employed graduate students. And according to administration, about 55% of graduate students are typically employed full-time after graduation. They want to look at the impact of the current job market and take a survey of 619 recent grads. That's a pretty large sample size that's going to be obtained. What if the population proportion of all recent our graduates that are employed full-time is the same? In other words, what if P, that population proportion, really still is 55%. What is the distribution for the possible sample proportions 
the possible p hat values that we could get from our survey. Come give us a sketch of that distribution for the values for the possible sample proportions. So I'm going to again take a quick look at my formula card. I'm dealing with sample proportions. And down here I've got a summary of what the distribution for the possible values of p hat could be as long as my sample size n is large enough, which I do have here. That model that we would expect for sample proportions is a normal distribution, approximately, with that mean and standard deviation as stated, so I need to use that. I want to draw an approximate normal model for the values of p hat, these p hat values that are possible, sample proportion values, which will vary approximately, normally, around the true proportion p, which was stated, what if it's still 0.55? So 0.55. And what about that standard deviation, the give or take? The standard deviation should be using that p and doing 1 minus that value of p over the sample size, 619, and then taking the square root of that. This standard deviation ends up being about 0.02. So we actually could even put a few values along our axes, going out standard deviation amounts of about 0 0.02 to reflect the distribution values that are possible a little more accurately. But we key in here that it's an approximate normal distribution with the right mean of still about 0.55 or 55% and the giver takes about 2%. The administration actually found 52% of their surveyed recent graduates were employed full-time, so they observed 52%. Where is 52% on our picture here? See, 55, 53, right about here. We would like to see how likely is it that we would get this kind of a sample proportion. That's kind of low, 52%. As low as that, or even lower. How likely is it under this model of what we'd expect to see of getting this 52% that we actually observed or something even less. So we're asked to figure out what is that probability. Well, to find any area under a normal curve, we standardize that value, so we get a little better perspective, knowing that it's now below the mean. And standardizing it should give us a z-score of about negative 1.5, so we're a little more than 1, 1 1.5 standard deviations below the mean, and I need the area to the left. Areas to the left of standard normal values can be found from our table. So we need to go down to our table, table A1, and we want the area to the left of a negative 1.5, 1.50. I see that is a 0, 0668, and I did want the area to the left, so my final answer is 0 0.06. Six, eight. About 6 to 7 percent is how likely it would be to see that kind of value we did observe or something less. Not that usual. Seems to be somewhat low.